Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle. I wanted to briefly compare three terms that we use to talk about the yield of a bond. These are different terms, but they are related, as we'll see, and that is the forward rate curve, the spot rate curve, and the yield to maturity on a bond. There's a plot here, and these all characterize the same exact bond. So in red, I have a forward rate curve. In blue, I have a spot rate curve. And in green, this is always going to be a horizontal line, I have the yield to maturity. So to explain how I got that, I first just made an assumption about a bond. I've got a par value of $100. That means that redemption or maturity, the $100 of principal is going to be returned. And it has a 6% coupon paying semi-annually. That means 6% of 100 is $6, paying $3 every six months. So the one thing I did is I assumed or imagined a spot rate curve. So these are the only input assumptions I made here. And to keep it simple, I assumed the six month spot rate is 1%. And the one year spot rate is 2%. And the spot rate at 18 months is 3% and so on so that I have 5% as the two and a half year spot rate. So that's the spot rate curve. That's the assumption. Everything else is calculated from it, including this set of discount factors here, which collectively are the discount function. All those do is give me a number. For example, here at 18 months, the 3% spot rate corresponds to 0.956 discount factor. That means I can multiply a future cash flow by that discount factor to convert it into a present value. So I can use the spot rate to calculate the discount factor that gives me a way to calculate the present value. And I'll need a different discount factor for each spot rate. So collectively, I really have an array or vector of discount factors that we call the discount function, but I'm not going to plot them here. I'm going to go instead to the forward rates, which are shown in red, and I didn't need to input those because I can calculate them from the spot rates. In other words, here's the spot rates I input. They already contain what I need in order to derive the implied forward rate curve. So for example, here at two years, the implied six month forward rate is 7%. That means the six month rate beginning in two years forward. It is 7% because as an investor, I need to be indifferent between investing at the two year rate of 4% or investing at the 18 month rate of 3% and then rolling over into this six month forward rate. So this forward rate of 7% makes me indifferent to investing here at 18 months and rolling over or going straight to the two years. So this forward rate of 7% is derived from this 18 month rate of 3% and the two year rate of 4%. And so on for each of these such that collectively I have the implied forward rate curve. Now with both of those, I'll just move my chart a little bit down. Given my assumption about the bond and the coupons that it pays, if I use the spot rate or the discount factors or even the forward rates, I did this three different ways in order to convert these coupon cash flows to present values. Here's the present values and then I sum those. They all happen to be the same. In this case, that's telling me the fair price of this bond is $102.06. So that's the fair price. Now, what is the yield to maturity? The yield to maturity is an internal rate of return. In this case, it's 4.88%. And I took a shortcut. I just used Excel's built-in rate function to do that. What the 4.88% means is that is the constant discount rate I can use for all of the cash flows. Those are my future cash flows right here. A coupon, a coupon, a coupon, a coupon, and then a coupon plus the principal. 
if I discount all of those at the same rate or yield and recall I, that's not the case in the spot rate my spot rates upward sloping my forward rate curves upward sloping so when we talk about the yield maturity we're doing something different we're saying what's that one yield that if we disc or if we discount all of these by that same yield we're gonna get the price of the bond and so in this case it happens to be 4.88 percent and so you can see it's necessarily unless the spot rate curve is totally flat it's going to be different. This yield to maturity here of 4.88% in a way incorporates or impounds all of the information in this upward sloping yield curve. And so I'm not surprised to see it somewhere in between 1 and 5% right about here. But it's a sort of averaging of the information in the spot rate curve. And so if we go down to the back to the chart we can now see for this same bond again 100 par 6 percent coupon first I imagined or input the spot rate curve in here in blue and then we said that contains embedded within it a forward rate curve because as we saw for example that 7 percent forward which is right here in red that's the rate that makes us indifferent to either investing at the 18 month rate or investing at the one year rate and then rolling over into the forward. So we've got an implied forward curve that's upward sloping but it's totally consistent with the spot rate curve and then finally we said the yield to maturity is the one number that we can use for all of the cash flows so we know it's going to be a flat line right here. So those are the that's the three terms and this is David Harper with the Bonac Turtle. Thanks for your time.